All right, so it looks like archaeologists have made a new discovery about the pyramid in Chichen Itzu, Mexico. And if you don't know where that is, it's this particular pyramid right here. It's there's a Mayan pyramid. Well, what they found was that it's built on top of another pyramid. And underneath that pyramid is another pyramid. So they think there could be multiple, like, you know, they know of at least like four different layers of pyramids from different ages that were all built by Mayans underneath that, underneath this particular pyramid. And that's really cool, man. Look at that. Now, um, what's really cool, um, I don't know if you guys know this about this particular pyramid, but every year during the equinox and the solstice, the sun's the sun casts a shadow across the, the edge of the pyramid onto this the stairway right here and when it does that it gives it like this stair step look like it looks like the um like the the back of a alligator or something like a spiky animal kind of and as the sun progresses throughout the day it slowly the shadows travel down the stairway and it's the at the end is a snake's head so it literally looks like a snake is crawling down these steps and all the people of uh, Mexico and stuff gather and watch this it happen uh, twice a year every year isn't that cool yeah I'd love to see that cool little effect and it's funny how pyramids um, how many of them have a connection with the uh, equinox or the solstice you know the, even the Great Pyramid has it so um, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. I wanted to show that to you guys. And this is another thing I thought was interesting. They're doing a story on looking inside the Great Pyramid of Giza. And they're um, running scans of all the pyramids looking for voids and hollows and different chambers and stuff like that. And going with my theory, which I developed by the way. I don't want to fucking think that I took it from someone else. <laughs> okay, that the pyramids are, at least with Giza are possibly built on top of already existing earth mounds and they encase the earth mounds with stone like they would cut out the center where they would have the burial chamber and then they would recycle those stones around the outside along with other stones and uh, form a encased pyramid and then when I see this um, I'm looking at you know so they're taking their scans and then I come across this now look they um, at one of the entrances uh, they have a void back there, you know, and they don't know what it's from and they say a 3d reconstruction showing a schematic view of the void behind the Great Pyramid's north face whether there is a substantial void or whether the muons are simply detecting a mix of large and small blocks that were used to construct the core of the pyramid is uncertain well, what if that's because this is actually like a mountain like a mound and these are like different fissures and air pockets and um natural uh you know gouges and and shit like that instead of it being large and small blocks you know i mean I'm t i think that i think all it does is lend credibility to my theory so i just wanted to point that out i'm telling you guys i really feel like i'm correct about this and hopefully i'll be able to prove it all right so i've got some bad news i'm pretty sure that I have debunked the Turkey UFO incident um, from 2007, 2008, 2009. Now this is his, his exact location. This is where he was. This is where his line of sight was. We took us off. I got this from the um, map that they put out themselves. And so I followed it exactly because I had a theory that it might be windmills. And so I went and I investigated. I tracked out his um, his site and you know where where it took place and everything. And I followed it across using Google Earth. And then see you can see the lights up there. That's what seeing those is what made me think that it was windmills because we have those here in Washington, and it looks just like that. And then when I followed the line of sight, the very first hill that I came to, the very first mound that's up in the air, is a windmill farm. So, and not only is it the windmill farm, um, like the, the red lights, but when you see it at night and it looks like the craft, I believe that is the arch of the mountain and it's reflecting the 
full moon because it has every time it's he films it it's with an extremely bright bright moon and the moonlight is reflecting off of the top of the hill off of where these windmills are mm-hmm. and uh which all this you know the the trees and uh, grass and debris is all moved away so it's just dirt so it reflects a lot of light and so it looks like like white bands and you know it looks like you know like there's separate pieces to it or whatever but it's just it's just this it's it, this the moonlight is reflecting off these windmill patches and that's what we're seeing you guys i i, I would fucking bet a million dollars on it I mean, it's exactly in the line of sight where he's seeing. It looks like it's high up in the air, but it, I mean, it is considering that it's on top of a mountain. All right, so what I have right here is a picture of um, the craft at night, and I'm going to take out all the black so you can see how it would lay like right over the mountain and why the black part in here, this would be like the caldera, like the, the divot right here, which the moonlight is not hitting. But the moonlight is hitting parts of the where the windmills are, like up here, you know, which would be areas like this. And then these, these what look like gray alien foreheads or whatever are actually mountains uh, back behind it. You see how it's, how it's like that caldera, like it, the, it would be receiving the moonlight. And then these are bright white, so they would be reflecting a lot of it. Yeah, so there it is, you guys. I'm pretty sure that he was looking at this hill, and that makes up the red light UFOs and the craft UFO. It's got the, the arch that sh- matches it, the colors match it, everything matches it, the direction, where it's at, everything. I hate to say it, you guys, but... <sighs> and this was one of my favorite ones, too, you know, so, I mean... And people have asked me if I ever debunked any of my uh, old videos. Uh, yeah, absolutely. If new information comes along, then it's up to us to use that information. You you don't change you know the you don't change the facts to match your theory. Okay, you know you change your theory to match the facts. You know when new evidence is presented to you, your theory has to uh, evolve and change and add into it. Um, I'm going to show you guys something real quick. So while I was out here uh, investigating, setting everything up, there's another little cool thing that I found. Um, I found a bunch of sunken ships, <laughs> you know, and I'm talking not like, you know, Scott C. Waring. I mean, like, these are some real sunken ships, you know. Check this shit out. There's one right there. And they're like all over the place here, I guess. Because, I, I mean, I kept finding them, too. I don't know how how old they are. I mean, they're they're uh, they're like tanker ships and shit like that. You know, look look. See, there's two more. You know, as so you can see, what the one looks like above the water. These guys are definitely under the water. You see that? That's how a real researcher does it. See, you don't just go around and look for something that looks similar, <laughs> but you actually find the thing. You know. It's like, he's like, oh, yeah, I just, Scott C. Warren one time was like, I, I just wanted to see if I could find a, what the fuck is that? I was just wondering, does anyone know what that is? Because <laughs> I don't have a clue. Uh, he's, he's like, I was wondering if I could just find a ship one day. Who does that? Who, who He was like on Google Earth and he saw something that looked like an old ship. And he's like, yep, that's a ship. I just want to see if I could do that. I want to prove it to myself, you know, see how fucking awesome I am. <sighs> he's such an idiot. Yeah, so um, uh, a friend of our channel, um, Coast to Ghost, was saying that um, they would like me to, uh, I mean, I get it all the time, that I should uh, upload every day, which is hard because, you know, I put a lot of effort into my videos or whatever, like my main videos. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into them. But I think um, I could just do uh, where I, you know, talk about uh, any stuff that's in the news, like um uh, anything that's interesting that's going on, uh, just for like daily uploads or whatever. And, um, you know, cause I'm always coming across <laughs> cool shit researching and everything. So I think I'm going to try to do something like that. That way I can upload every day and, you know, keep everyone, uh, uh, happy and coming back for more and, and all that good stuff. So, uh, you know, be on the lookout for that. Also, um, I, my campaign is about to end for the Black Friday sale for um, my UFO proof hoodies. And you can go to the UFO warehouse. That's my personal store to go there, pick up all kinds of UFO proof merchandise. We got cups, we got um, t shirts, and long sleeves, and baseball jerseys, and 
uh, uh, hoodies. I got zip up hoodies. And I got new designs on there and stuff. So go check out the new designs and everything. Um, it's fucking badass. You can find it all through my website at realufoproof.tk. Just go there, sign up, and it says right to the store. You'll see it up on a drop down menu. Go into it, get whatever you guys want. All right, everybody. UFO proof. <laughs>